Don't be the best. Be the only. Have you heard that saying? I think it's very profound. Because if you try to be the best at something, you're going to find yourself competing with many others who are trying to be the best at that thing. Uh, and at some kind of standard that you know everyone recognizes as the best, then, well, you will always be competing. And I think it's quite exhausting. And it's maybe not as authentic as the other strategy, which is to be the only. So for example, I'm not trying to be the best at making YouTube videos, but I would love to be making videos in only the way that I can, in the way that most expresses my energy signature. I am not trying to be the best writer. <laughs> so, many, so, so many others have already uh, gone way ahead of me, but I am trying to write in the way that only I can with my voice. And this is, by the way, where, you know, using AI, people who use it the way I don't. I don't use AI for writing or for content creation. I use it for some brainstorming and some problem solving, but eventually I still bring my own energy signature as much as possible to, uh, to my content. So don't be the best, be the only. And I want, I hope that you can apply this to all aspects of your authentic business because that's what makes your business authentic. So in this video, I'm going to uh, offer you a list of possible strengths that if you find the right combination that makes you come alive, then your business will be so much more enjoyable and successful. And this list that I'm going to give you could also be said to be a list of possible weaknesses. And sometimes you might be trying to shore up certain weaknesses because other people said you should get good at this when you really find it like, you know, swimming uphill, basically. And instead, if you were to put your energies and focus and um, time into shoring up your strengths, uh, finding ways to apply your strengths even better, well, then you're going to get ahead in your business much faster than if you were to try to, to compensate for your weaknesses. Okay, so as I list out the following, um, I, I want you to hear for anything that jumps out at you immediately going, oh, that's me. And I want you to be honest. You know, no one else has to see this list of what whichever ones you write down except for you. Okay. Be honest about your strengths and your weaknesses. And I'll try to be honest with you as I go through this list about what I think are my strengths and weaknesses. And and you can uh, and, and the point is not to have more strengths. I mean, you might naturally have some of these. And the point is to get good at the combination, like I'm going to list out like, I don't know, 20 something of them. And it's not like, oh, I have, I have 17 of those check. No, no. It's like, oh, I have two of these <laughs> and I'm going to really, or three of these, and I'm going to really lean into these, the combination of these three and apply that to every aspect of my business. So if you want to see the list uh, written out, so you can kind of think about it and um, you know, reflect on it more. You can go to the link. I'm going to put the link in the description of the video. If you're watching this on YouTube, it's below this video. If you're watching this on Facebook, it's above this video. Okay. And if you're watching this somewhere else and you can't click on the link, then you can just search um, the blog post on my website is called clarify your unique strengths or list of traits. You know, you can search clarify your unique strengths, George Cow. You should be able to find it. Okay. So here it is. Number one, and these are in no particular order. These are order that I just kind of thought of as I went along. Okay. And so one is not better than the others. All right. Here's one of them. If you have been told that you are attractive. Okay. By the way, I, I haven't been told that, but if you've been told throughout your life that you are an attractive person, you are beautiful, you're handsome, whatever, then guess what? Being on video 
is one of it should be one of your strengths. It should because people like seeing attractive people on video or taking selfies and posting photos of yourself on Instagram, you know, with a caption, sharing your message or on Facebook or elsewhere. It could be one of your one of your strategies that you do. Now, <laughs> I just told you that people haven't told me that I'm handsome uh, or good looking throughout my life. Hey, listen, listen, I'm just being honest. I know a lot of you watching this are my are my big supporters. And you're like, George, don't be so hard on yourself. You look just fine. You look. Listen, listen, this is this is the point of this video is not to like be polite and praise each other and like try to like, you know, make yourself feel good. We're trying to be honest here about what is above average for you compared to other people and what is naturally above average should be what you strategically lean into and, and improve more. So uh, like I said, even though I'm not attractive, I still do video a lot, as you can tell, because I teach content creation. And so that's one of my strengths is I teach and I sell courses on content creation and video making. So I sell what I do. I teach what I do. So that's one of my unique strengths is that um, I, I'm able to sell what I do. And, and uh, you know, anyway, so if I didn't teach content creation and sell courses on video making, I promise you I wouldn't be on video so much. Okay. In fact, in the first couple of years of my business, I was like, poo-pooing video saying, oh, it'll never be a thing. It's so funny, right? Because now it's such a big thing. It's so, so important. Um, but because I was feeling low self-esteem being on video and I, I knew I wasn't a model like other, I have, you know, friends and colleagues who are, who are really good looking. And I tell them, listen, you, you have naturally, you know, uh, advantageous face structure and skin. And, and uh, you know, subtle things make such a difference in how, in how someone is considered handsome or pretty or whatever. All right. So let's, uh, let's go on <laughs> to the next one, which is, do you have a pleasant voice? Again, be honest. Have people told you that you have a pleasant voice throughout your life? If so, you should do podcasting. Definitely. And also, you, you might want to do video. That video, that's actually one of my strengths. People have told me over the years, I, I'm, I can be honest about that. I have a better voice than most people. Better speaking voice than most people. I sing too, by the way, but I, I'm, I'm not as good of a singer as, as the people who can really make it singing. Uh, but I have a better speaking voice than most people. So being on video helps actually, right? Because video, especially a speaking message type video, People oftentimes don't even look at the person and they're like cooking or they're cleaning and then they're listening to a message on YouTube and the voice is very important. I have a soothing, pleasant voice. That's why I, that's actually probably why I should do video. You know, it's probably, especially teaching type of videos. And I, of course, I have a podcast as well. Okay. Next, do you have more time than most of your peers? That's definitely not true for some of you. Some of you are like, oh my God, I, I have less time than most people. Well, if you have more time for, let, let's be clear here, building your business than most people, then you should use that advantage and experiment with more different types of business building. Like you could take more courses and implement more courses. But there are people that I work with, that's my clients who have a full-time job and they have so little time that they can't really experiment with a lot so you have an advantage over them and you can experiment more and therefore find more of what's uh what works well for you for them they have to like all right if they have to experiment it takes them years right so time then time over yeah anyway next one okay um do you have more money than most of your peers in business some people do some people don't some of you are lucky to have you know partner support or you have an inheritance or you have savings or whatever and if you have uh if you if you're not financially stressed then you could take some of the money you have and use ads spend money on like i do facebook ads instagram ads linkedin ads youtube ads to build an audience more quickly so just be honest with yourself you have less money then you don't spend money on ads right next one do you have, and I've got a bunch more for you. So don't, don't, don't stress out if, if you're saying no, 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 no to a bunch of these, because I have a bunch more that, uh, that some of you, uh, some of, some of which you can really lean into. Okay. 
Next one, tech savviness. If you're more tech savvy than the average person, then you could do things like search engine optimization, Google ads, and other more techie type marketing things that um, people who are less tech savvy need to lean more into things like net caring, one-on-one -on -one connections, right? And maybe some kind of social media that's easy. Um, all right, so that's tech savviness or they might need to hire people or they're not tech savvy. Okay, next one, do you like spreadsheets? <laughs> I know a lot of you don't, but those of you who do, well, that's great. You get to organize your information in your business much easier than those who don't. Those who don't can just use a Google document or a document to, to do things. It's a little bit slower, but still okay. Next one, do you live in a place that has beautiful surroundings? If you do, you might want to make video or take photos, right? Because that's your advantage. Some of us live, I, I actually now live in a place with, with pretty nice surroundings. I probably should go out to my garden and make more videos, actually, to be honest. Um, but, I, but I wasn't previously. Now, I've previously in San Francisco, I had to go somewhere to, you know, like takes me 10, 15, half an hour to be in a beautiful surrounding. And, you know, but now I can literally walk outside here, have a beautiful garden. Um, next, do you love to write? I will tell you that is such a big advantage because I have disliked writing pretty much all my life. I still kind of dislike writing, to be honest with you. But I had, I, I, I barely wrote anything after college, which was traumatic for me because I had to stay up all night to write papers, and it, I, I just, I, I swore, I'm like, I'm never going to do writing for my career. <laughs> I laugh because that's what I mostly do now. I do a lot of writing, but I don't like it. I don't enjoy it. But some of you are just, you love writing. You enjoy it. Do more of it. And, and, and some of you are better at writing than, than others. I, again, I will be honest with you. I am a below average writer. No, I'm, again, please don't be polite with me and say, George, no, you're, you're fine. No, let's not, let's, let's not beat around the bush. Let's be honest with each other. I am not a good writer. My writing is just average. It's, I keep using certain things like, you know, don't do this. Instead, do that. Like that's basically my entire <laughs> writing style. You know, it's like, I saw this the other day and I didn't like that. Instead, you should do this. My entire writing strategy. Anyway, but some of you are just, I read your writing, you're like, you're, you're definitely, you know, a better writer than me. And you should do more of it. Okay. So, all right. Next one. Are you a good teacher? Some of you love teaching and some of you have a hard time doing that. Well, if you're a good teacher, you should teach more. You should probably make videos teaching, right? Or do podcasts where you teach or write as you teach and of course create create courses and group programs where you teach and you should co connect with your colleagues who aren't as good of a teacher and you should teach for their audience, right? I have to be a pretty good teacher. So that's why I've leaned into that a lot in my, in my business. Do you have cute animals that are willing to be on camera with you? Well, use it, okay? Use it in your photos, maybe, maybe your videos too. I don't, I have animals, but they don't like being on video or, or, you know, so I don't do it. And so anyway, next one. Do you have a network of influential people? Some of you do. Some of you have built up a career and you know some people who are quite influential or, or you just have friends and you've hobnobbed and you know people who have, you know, an Instagram following or whatever. What well, you should use it. You should you should stop trying to build an audience by yourself and really reconnect with your professional network, with your friends who have an audience or who have connections to it. To people with an audience. You really should lean into that. Okay. Next one. Do you have graphic design sensibility? Do you have more visual uh, sort of savviness than most people? I don't. I don't have graphic. I actually put, have pretty good visual savviness, but I, I, I just am so exhausted with graphic design. I couldn't, I can't stand it. But some of you love tinkering with graphics. You should use it. Do more graphic design-y type stuff in your content, in your social media posts, in your you know, products on your website, do more, you know, create more graphics. You know, you, that's an advantage. Are you naturally funny? I would like to say I'm naturally funny. <laughs> okay. I'm not as funny as some of you are, um, but some of you are quite funny and some of you aren't. And you should be honest and just let it go. <laughs> but if you're naturally funny, you should uh, probably make videos, honestly. Um, if, if, if friends have told you, hey, you're, you're a really funny person, you should, you should make videos. I don't care if you're not attractive, attract, whatever. If you're funny, you should go on camera and just be your rocket, rock your natural funny self and, um, and, and put that in writing and don't be afraid, just go for it, right? Are you naturally charismatic and motivational? 
I think I have that going for me. I just, I'll be honest. I, people have found me motivational over the years. Then of course, I think making videos, that's also another reason why I make videos. I think I'm naturally motivational. That's why some of you watch me. And, uh, you know, I, some people could say that's a gift of gab, gift of gab, right? You're just naturally good talker. And I, I, okay, I'll say this. I actually wasn't naturally a good talker most of my life. So I have to say this. This is one that I actually developed. Maybe I always had that seed within me, but I was always really shy talking most of my life until, until I was in my 20s. I was in certain situations that really encouraged me to speak up. I took certain courses that encouraged me to speak up. And I tried speaking up and I leaned into my heart of service and my heart for trying to help others. And that really came alive. And now I'm naturally motivational on video. Okay. Do you have a unique quirk, quirky style or unusual energy? And people tell you that, hey, you're really unique. You're really, you're really unique person. Like you have a really quirky style. You should not hide that. You should bring that out. Actually, to be honest, I think all of us have some kind of quirky style. You should find what that quirky style is that you have and make it come alive. Bring that out. Okay, really bring that out. Um, that's what I call your energy signature. Okay, next. Are you naturally good at conversation? Like when you, when you get one-on-one -on -one with someone, they feel really comfortable with you. Well, if that's the case, you should do more one-on-one -on -one conversations. Do uh, what I call market discovery um, conversations. You can, I have a blog post about what is market discovery and you should Google that. Um, market discovery, George Cow, and then read, read that. I have a course on that too if you want to dive in. But market discovery is how we find out what we should be selling. Not We're not selling people, but we should have conversations, asking certain things, doing, doing conversations that with where we find out what we should be selling that people would love to buy. That makes our business much easier. So if you're good at conversation, do more market research. Are you good at copywriting? Some of you are naturally good at motivating people through, through your writing. Well, guess what? You should do that. And maybe you should help your friends and colleagues with copywriting. I bet I would say that's one of my weaknesses. I naturally am not good at trying to motivate people through, through my writing. I'm okay at it just because I've been around marketing so long. I'm, I think I'm probably average at it, but some of you are just pretty natural at it. Okay. So what else? I'm going to, I'm going to speed round now, list out a bunch more and uh, see if you resonate with any of these two. Do you have a lower cost of living? than most people. By the way, this is something we can change. Okay. This is something I changed. I live in I lived in San Francisco for 20 years. Not a low cost of living. Now I moved to Mexico, which has now saved me. Uh I didn't save that much. I guess we, we had paid off our mortgage for a couple of years then. And so our cost of living went down a lot. Here still I think I'm saving about a thousand to one to two thousand per month. So it's not huge savings, but it's it is savings. Uh, so you can you can move somewhere with lower cost of living and instantly create this advantage for yourself because with lower cost of living, it means you have more spaciousness with how you build your business. You have more liberate, you have more freedom. You don't have you don't have this much pressure. So really, really consider this. Okay. This is all of us can can create this advantage for ourselves. Okay. Next one. Are you younger? <laughs> I am not sure I would say I'm younger anymore, but if you're younger, that means you have more years to experiment. I'm in my late forties in case you're wondering. Some of you are like, Oh, George, you're young. Yeah. You know, it's all relative, but some of you are like in your twenties or in your thirties. I didn't even start my business until I was in my mid thirties. So if you're still in your late twenties, early thirties, my goodness, you have, you have an advantage. If you're older. Okay. Some of you are in your seventies or 80s, some of who maybe who are watching this, if you're older, that means guess what, you can really lean into saying, listen, I can tell you from my 70 years of experience living, right, or 60 years or 50 years or whatever, you really can lean into being like the wise elder. Don't be shy. Don't don't. Hey, there's no ageism here. There's only advantage, right? Lean into that. Um, do you have certifications that your audience knows and cares about? I don't. Well, to be honest, I have a master's in business, but I never talk about it because I'm just kind of embarrassed. I feel like what I learned in my MBA, I did, I, I applied none of it in my business. Today. I, I did everything I, I apply and teach my business. I learned on my own after my master's of business. So I, I really don't see that as an advantage. But some of you do. Some of you have a certification. Your audience will be impressed by that based on your skill. 
Talk about that more often. You should, okay? Do you have a non-American accent? My accent's boring. I have an American accent. I wish I had a British accent. I would sound smarter. Or an Australian accent. I would sound smarter. <laughs> or, or even an Asian accent just would sound more unique. But I just have a dang, boring, Californian accent. <laughs> valley, valley accent. I don't know. All right. Um, next one. Do you have less requirement for business income? You know, maybe you have, you have family support or whatever, or you have savings. Well, then you have more peace with gradually building your business. You don't have to be in such a rush, right? Anyway, I have some other ones. Languages, you have foreign language. That could be an, uh, uh, a plus. Do, do you have a particular, are you of, of a particular gender and race and other personal characteristics that your audience would naturally appreciate? It's really weird. Over the years, I've noticed that an unusual number of my clients have lived in Asian countries or have had Asian spouses or Asian close friends. I'm like, no wonder you like me as an Asian. I'm not being racist here. I'm just telling the truth. It's just the truth, you know? Like, and some people maybe don't like me as an Asian because they're whatever reason. They, you know. Anyway, so I'm just going to stop here. <laughs> There's probably more you can find my, on my blog post, but this is the thing. If you have advantages, you, you're, you have some of these advantages, really focus on them. Lean into them, make them more of a bigger deal in your content, in your business, and you will do better. Um, anyway, if you have more advantages, you can help others with less advantages or less strong advantages. If you have less advantages, that means you have just means you, you get to focus on the few you have and really bring them alive. I hope this is helpful. Thanks for watching. I look forward to seeing if this is, uh, if you have any other that, that I didn't name, any, any, any other advantages. Uh, that I didn't name, you can comment below. I look forward to seeing you. Thanks.